hopefully. Uh, but redrafting time, we're starting to get back into the archives here. Um, 2013, I still do remember these rookies. I wasn't in Melbourne at the time, but like I remember when the Bont was a young man and stuff like that. He kicked that goal over his shoulder. Was that his debut? I can't remember. Uh, first year, it was against Melbourne at Eddie Had. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was a strange looking bloke back then, actually. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's aged well um, but yeah interested to see how far we get back because I might have to pull the pin soon when I start not knowing <laughs> these names but I might start us off I like starting these Go ones off because then you can come in voice of reason later um, <laughs> then I might have a few mature ages I know Rory Lobb was we mentioned that before and Ben Brown was I'm not sure if there was any others I think I saw one that was like I, a year before but I can't remember who it was um, I don't think there was any obvious ones no yeah, all right. So my honourable mentions, this is a, I was saying to Rowie um, before we came on it, I think this could be the hardest one we've done because, um, well, compared to the last week's one, there's a lot more who have um, had established careers in the AFL. And I feel like at this stage in their career, it's hard to balance potential and what they've done already because, yeah, they're, they're still only young, but like some of them might only have a couple of years left and stuff like that. So it's a tough, tough juggle, but... Honorable mentions: Dom Sheed, obviously premiership hero, but hasn't made me hasn't made my cut. Jack Billings um, has always had pretty high potential, but I think my top tens achieved a lot more than him in the game so far. Uh, Zach Jones, I've loved that bloke pretty much since he started, but yeah, similar to Billings, just hasn't done enough yet. And then three guys who have been really good either this year or last year, but Alir Alir, Carl Amon, and Darcy Gardner. Um, maybe if we redid this in three or four years, they might work their way into the top 10. But uh, yeah, right now, um, probably not good enough to be in the top 10. But number 10, I've gone with Luke McDonald. Uh, have a very soft spot for this player. Uh, I think he's a bit underrated just because he plays for a rubbish team. But uh, he's been injured this year. I think he's played one game for all of about five minutes. But uh, yeah, it was the 2020 North Best and Ferris, which you may laugh at because, like, you know, who do they have? But still a good, still a good effort to be a Best and Ferris from anywhere. But yeah, I think he's a really high quality player. They've sort of um, mixed around his role every now and then. Like he's had a bit of a go at tagging. He's had a go at the wing, halfback flank. Uh, but yeah, I think he's actually a pretty solid player. He had a bit of a form slump. I think it was in 2019, late 2018. But either side of that form slump, I think he's been a pretty reliable player for North and hopefully he comes back soon and um, starts adding some experience to that young team. Number nine, pretty controversial guy. No one, a bit like Tom Mitchell, no one knows what his true impact on a game is, but Matt Crouch, a lot of talk about him, whether you'll leave Adelaide and stuff like that. Uh, His brother obviously did last year, made the all Australian team in 2017, which I'll be honest, I did not know he did that, but fair play to him. Uh, he's one of the best and fairest at Adelaide, been in the top five quite a few times. Uh, yeah, it's just the reason he's so low, the, those achievements sound pretty good, but the reason he's so low is just I'm not sure about um, his impact and I'm not sure if he will progress any higher. I feel like he's basically showing us what he's going to give us uh, for the rest of his career pretty much. Number eight, don't know if you'll have this bloke, uh, but Darcy Byrne-Jones was in the All-Australian team last year, won Port's best and fairest. So winning uh, a best and fairest of a top two team, pretty impressive. Uh, he had a pretty slow start to his career, you'd have to say. There was a fair few years there where he was kind of just making up the numbers in the Port team. But uh, from 2019, probably halfway through 2019, he's been one of Port's best players. Uh, not that well known. I, I know quite a few people were saying who was that bloke on All-Australian night last year, but he's a pretty reliable <laughs> player, so don't worry about that. Um, so, yeah, I've got him at number eight. Number seven, I've gone with Tom Barras. I think he is one of the most underrated players in the comp, I'd have to say. If he was at any other team, he'd be talked about as one of the best tall backmen going around because West Coast have 48 gun tall players. He's kind of just <laughs> kind of forgotten about and he's a bit in McGovern's shadow. Uh, but he uh, was in the top four for their best and fairest last year. So that shows how highly he's rated in a good team. Uh, and, yeah, I think he's a very vital cog to that team because it allows McGovern to be a bit more of an interceptor as he just locked down, locks down the big tool. And, yeah, I think he's a big reason why that defence has been so good for a long time. Uh, and, obviously, we've talked about in the past, uh, tall players are harder to find, even though this draft didn't actually offer up too many 
but number six, uh, if you look, I only started watching footy this year, you'd probably be very confused why he's at number six, but I've gone with Christian Salem. Uh, I really like this guy, actually. I think he's, well, he has always been a very silky player, but this year he's gone to another level. Uh, last year he came seventh in the Melbourne Best and Ferris, but this year he's coming about 15th in the coaches' votes, which I think is a better judge of a player's ability than uh, Brownlow votes because, uh, you know, yeah, self-explanatory really, but uh, Brownlow voting is a little bit flawed. But, yeah, so obviously rated very highly by the coaches to be up there, had a very good start to the year, as has a lot of his teammates. Not sure how good he can become, Um We'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah, I just think the top five have all done a lot more so far in their career, and that's probably – like, right now, he's probably good enough to maybe be second, in my opinion. But um, just based on what he's done in his career, I don't think he's achieved nearly as much as the top five. Uh, Number five, this is controversial, but I'm worried about how he's going to go into the latter years of his career. With He's hearing all these reports that he's getting injections every week and stuff like this. He's already starting to show a little bit of a decline from his peak, and it's Patrick Cripps. Um, I think a lot of people would instantly, well, before this year anyway, I think most people look at this draft class, go Bolt 1, Cripps 2. Uh, but, yeah, I just don't know how long Cripps will play or how long he'll be good for because I think this year we've already we've already seen that he's not probably the Patrick Cripps we, we're used to seeing. Uh, number four, I think this guy is very good, just struggling to get on the park at the moment, and he doesn't actually have a timeline on him this year, so I don't know if he's going to play this year, but James Sicily, uh, he came sixth in the Hawthorne Best and Ferris last year, and he only played half the games for the season before he did his knee. Uh, he floated around up forward, uh, wasn't quite his scene, a bit like Darcy Moore, struggled early, sent back, and he turned out to be one of the best intercepting defenders uh, at, he was just so dominant at the start of last year and 2019 as well. Uh, I think he was in my Brownlow voting thing I did. I think he was actually winning before he did his ACL. So, uh, yeah, I rate him very highly. I think he can be a very good player as long as he gets on the park. I was going to have him probably at number two, but I just think with his injuries and his limited um, like time of dominance, if you know what I mean, so far in his career, I think that's kept him down to four. Uh, number three, I've got Josh Kelly, highly rated player. Uh, I don't know how highly I rate him personally, but uh, 2017 All-Australian uh, has won a BNF at the Giants. Probably last year wasn't as good as we're used to seeing. In the start of this year, he was playing out of position, but now he's been moved back into the guts and he's been killing it the last few weeks and could arguably be a big reason why Giants are playing really well at the moment. But Interesting to see what he does with his whole contract uh, scenario that he's got going on. I think he has an option of another, like, six years or something ridiculous. His contract is so weird, and it's basically all up to him. So we'll see what he does, but he's my number three. Number two, I've got Zach Merritt. Um, highly rated player. One, two, Essendon, Best and Ferris. 2017 All-Australian. Currently in the top ten for the coaches' votes this year. Uh, higher... Just, yeah, don't really need to add much else. Could be on the move to Carlton this year, so we'll see about that. That's what Brody thinks anyway. But, uh, yeah, (laughs) everyone thinks he's a gun, so I don't really need to add much more. And number one, obviously, Marcus Bontempelli. Uh, Just off the top of the dome, you'd have to say top five player in the competition. Not like I don't actually have a top five in my head, but, yeah, I'm just um, free spitball on there but yeah three all australian appearances currently second in the coaches votes won three best and fairest uh just before we came on the air i saw an article on my facebook feed saying is he the best western bulldog ever and he's 25 or 26 so uh, that basically just says it all um how highly he is rated uh, but yeah bond got to be number one uh, all right so interested to hear your list because i was really unsure about most of them probably past the top five I was happy with, but then below that I legit had no idea. So I'm interested to hear what you say. Yeah, all right. So mine's not too shockingly different from yours, actually. I think we've gone okay, fairly good. similar. Um, a few honourable mentions. I've got, unfortunately, the Nank has just missed yeah. out. I know he's obviously a premiership player and all that. But at the end of the day, I think there's a lot of Ruckman in the competition that could have played his role. Um I don't. It wasn't obviously like 
best on grounds in any of those games or anything. Um, so he was a very, very, very good player in, since he's come to the Tigers. He was picked at pick 40-odd or something. So very good trade from the Tigers, that, because obviously he got their premiership Ruckman, but I think the plays ahead of him are just a bit better. I've actually got Matt Crouch in the honourable mentions. Um, I think his impact on the game is obviously very questionable and he's obviously a bit injury prone at the moment, which I do tend to factor into these because you don't want to pick someone that's very injury prone. So I've also got Jarman Impey's in there, Zach Jones in there, Alir Alir, Carl Amon, Luke McDonald, etc. But coming in at number 10, I'm going to have Christian Salem, not as high as you, um, given this is the first year he's really shown that he is a very good player off that halfback line. Um, you know, it, it is arguably one of the less difficult roles. I'll, okay, I'll use that wording to play on the ground. However, you do need a very good kick to play that role. And that's something he's got. And that's something that is very sort of undervalued in this sport. You need it to be a very good player. You have to have a very good kick. And he's got that. Um, at number eight, sorry, at number nine, Darcy Byrne Jones. I do have him in here. Um, Obviously, very good player for Paul. Pretty underrated. Obviously, I think it was a bit of a meme in his first few years. Um, I think he few Port play so few Port fans uh, weren't too happy. He kept on getting a game, but he has repaid the faith, and he's obviously a very good player. Um, I admit I was a little bit surprised to see him in that All Australian team last year, but at the same time, he's a very quality player, and he did win their BNF. So it just goes to show that he is very highly touted by them. Um, number eight, I've got Dom Sheed. Um, I know you had him, I'm a bit higher, you left him out, but obviously, arguably, Eagles wouldn't have won that flag without him. Um, he does get a, a lot of these 25 plus possession games, which is um, what you want to see in your midfielders. Um, and he is stepping up at a time where the likes of Gaff, Shuey, and Yo are all injured, and he's showing he's still making sure that this midfield. Um, is continuing on the way it should be. And, yeah, in my eyes, he's a very solid player ever since they drafted him. Um, you know, probably isn't going to get any higher than, let's say, eighth if I was to do this in a few years' time. However, I do think he's a very good player for them and he's a very important player to them. Um, at number seven, a man that doesn't get enough recognition, Darcy Gardiner. Um, we always speak about these key position players, but, yeah, Darcy Gardiner's definitely up there for me. Um, it, was obvious, it was a player that I wanted the Saints to really get, but unfortunately we didn't. We chose to, I won't use that word, uh, picks 18 and 19, but we got Darcy Gardner. So they got Darcy Gardner and he's obviously been a very solid player for them. And when we talk about playing in the shadows of people, and he's very much in the shadow of Harris Andrews, but he is a very good player for them and a very good lockdown key defender. Um, so I think they're being bitted. We always talk about how they'd be in a lot of trouble, the Lions, if they didn't have Harris Andrews. And I think... Obviously, to a lesser extent, but it would be a similar case if they lost Harris, uh, Darcy Gardner, which they have done. Obviously, they got the win over the, the Tigers on the weekend, so it showed that um, they do have cover for him, but he is a very good player for them. Uh, number six, I've got James Sicily. Um, very, very good player. Awesome to watch. One of the most watchable players in the competition, obviously. Um, unfortunately, I just can't get him any higher than this at the moment, unfortunately. Um, they do play around with his role. A little bit, which is annoying because he should just play full-time back. But at the end of the day, very, very solid play and awesome to watch. And number five, Tommy Barras. Obviously, premiership winning key defender for the Eagles. Um, very much in the shadow of uh, Jeremy McGovern and basically the rest of their list. Um, but yeah, I, I struggle to see where they would have gotten that key defender from if they didn't draft him because he's been extremely solid for them and just a mainstay in that defence um, where a lot of decent plays have come through, but at the end of the day, none as good as Tom Barras. So I would have liked to see how whether the results of the Eagles in the past few years would have changed if they didn't have him in the side because he is obviously the main lockdown defender where McGovern intercepts. Um, but yeah, he's going to be set at five for me. And number four, I've actually got Zach Merrick. I don't have him higher than that. I think his disposal can be a bit shaky, which is why I don't have him ahead. And he's not, I guess, the toughest inside midfielder that we see. He does play a bit inside, a bit outside. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a very, very good player for the Bombers. Um, obviously, their main midfielder, and there are talks of him um, being sort of scouted by other teams because he is a very quality player. Obviously, got all Australian, I think, in the same year as Matt Crouch. Um, on, I think they're on opposite wings in that team. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, at number three, 
I'm gonna and I'm gonna have Josh Kelly. Um, he's a very very smooth, silky player um, for the Giants, and lots of people have obviously doubted how good he is, and I think that's. Mostly due to the fact that he hasn't been playing full-time mid. When he plays full-time mid, he dominates, or well, not dominates, but plays extremely well every single time. Um, gets 25-30, really nice possessions, and he is becoming a bit of a goal kicker now, which is what you want from your midfielders. Um, he's exactly the type of player I want at the Saints, so I hope we go after him this year, but I don't think we will. I don't think we have the salary cap, unfortunately, which is ironic given how little elite players we have on our list. But anyway, and number two... I'm going to have Patrick Cripps, which, well, would have been just without question at the start of the year. At the moment, obviously, he has very trouble by injuries and isn't the player he used to be. Um, Sam Walsh has basically overtaken him now. Um, But I think, yeah, look, Cripps, he's showed how good he is. He showed he's literally one of the best players in the competition when fit. Um, those tall midfielders are uh, extremely good, as we've seen, and it's become a real asset for clubs, these tall midfielders, ever since Bont and Cripps were introduced into the AFL and Fife, obviously. Um, so I think he really needs a pe- he needs an off-season where he just focuses on the body or he just needs a period of time where he just focuses on the body. You know, if Carlton aren't finals chances for the last three or four weeks of the year, just get him to sit it out, focus on the body, because they need him fit to really be a genuine chance at... at uh, making a finals push because um, he is that good when fit. Um, but at the moment, he's just he's obviously being thrown into every centre bounce every single week, getting tagged half of them, getting bashed around, and they really need to protect him. Hopefully, for his sake, Sam Walsh starts getting a bit of the attention because he bloody needs to. And I think he did in the second half of the Carlton Hawks game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have Cripps at two because we know how good he is. And He's, he's still, you know, he's 24, 25, um, still has time to obviously reach those heights again, given it's only, you know, it's only taken half a year to a year for him to sort of dip. So there's no reason why he can't take that same amount of time or even less to get back up to those heights that he used to hit. But at number one is obviously going to be Marcus Bontempelli. God, I wish we drafted this man. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. And... He's just so he is one of the best players in the competition. There's no denying that. Um, he's just that, like I said, a real asset given he's a tall midfielder who kicks goals. He's a lovely piercing left, uh, sorry, piercing kick on him um, when he does hit his targets. And yeah, yeah just 20, his 25, 30 touches are a lot more valuable than many, than most players, 25 to 30 touches in the competition. Um, and he's, he's going to. I'm very, very close to Brownlow this year, if not win it. So he's definitely going to be my number one. I think that was the only position in this redraft I was comfortable with. Um, so I'm probably going to leave it at that. I also forgot to mention Jack Billings was an honourable mention, but um, yeah, that's going to round out my redraft of 2013. Yeah, no, I think you, I think I should have factored in the premiership from Barras and Sheed as well. That's that a good point from you. I think... I don't think anyone else, oh yeah, Bont um, won a premiership, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it, unless like Zach Jones won one at Sydney or something. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's going to be... It, I think, yeah. Oh yeah, what a dog. Um, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> to, it's actually going to be interesting to watch these podcasts back in like five years. Because like, yeah. there's people like Travis Boak, who if you thought about the, his draft class, I don't know, four years ago, like you probably wouldn't even be close to well, I don't know who else is in his draft, but you know what I mean? And now he'd probably be right up there with one of the best. Like, it's interesting to yeah. see who kicks on. Like, It's a miracle! Oh, yeah! What about that one? Marcello! Unbelievable! Balotelli! Aguero! Crowd cheers. Here's Siddle. 